Well, hello, family. It's so good to be with you here in the at-home kitchen today. We are celebrating Mother's Day. Let me be the first to say happy Mother's Day to all of you wonderful women that have such an influence in the world today. Um, truly, what you do with your children in your raising them is so important. And I can't stress how much uh, without that influence that you have on them, the world would really be in bad shape. I'm honoring my mom today. Her name, uh, Lillian Snyder Boback. And she and my dad, there she is there uh, with my dad. They were married 56 years when she went home to be with Jesus. And I tell you, she was quite a lady. She had the gift of hospitality. She, because uh, my dad was a pastor and he was always bringing someone home to, for her to feed. And from the time I was nine years old, she was teaching me how to set the table, how to make salads, how to do all the things that mothers do. I had two older brothers, and then I was the only girl, and I was the baby. And she and I were very, very close. In fact, I could have gone to first grade at five years old, but I didn't get to go because I couldn't stand to be away from Mama because she and I were so close. But I tell you what, she's a, she was a wonderful woman, and I miss her every single day. And... Um, she just knew how to put a meal together in 45 minutes. Dad would call and say, hey, I'm bringing so-and-so. Boom, she'd say, Arlene. When I heard that in her voice, I knew we got to get moving. Somebody's coming for dinner. Today, I honor her. She truly is that Proverbs 31 woman that just really desires to make a home, not a house, but a home for her family, for her children, for her husband. She loved God first and foremost. And then she loved her family and my dad, of course. And for 56 years, they were together. And she came to know the Lord as her Savior when she was nine years old. At two years old, she was healed of rheumatoid arthritis, could not walk. And the preacher come to pray for her on a Wednesday night after the meeting at church, the Bible study. And do you know that the next morning, they had to carry her everywhere. She couldn't walk. The next morning, she rolled out of bed and was totally healed and never had a problem again. I tell you what, she's a treasure. I'm so appreciative to God that he placed me in a home where I had a mother that loved us no matter what, provided for us. There was a, a house of love, really. And today, I honor her with her favorite meal. We'll get started preparing that favorite meal in just a minute. But first, here's today's at-home hint. Store dried pasta, rice, except brown rice, and whole grains in lightly covered containers in a cool, dry place. Refrigerate brown rice and freeze the grains if you will not use them within five months. If you have an at-home hint, a favorite recipe, or just a friendly greeting you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. Post it in the comments of this video or visit our Facebook page. Well, we're making Mother's Day dinner. Tammy's with us. Mr. Williams is here. How nice of you to join us today, honey. I just love being on here. You know? <laughs> I He's don't, lying. I don't. You want to say hello to all your peeps? <laughs> I've been teasing her for a number of weeks to tell her. You know, you need to say hello to the viewers from Paul. <laughs> no, Paul likes to read the mail. Paul. So does Arlene. But I says, even the email. You know, when the viewer, you as a viewer, ask Arlene to pray for you, that Arlene and I spend quality time praying for prayer requests. We do. Whatever the need is, I want you to know that Arlene prays for them as well as myself. So, viewer, I'm glad you watch this program. <laughs> All right, Paul, enough. <laughs> We're trying to get the show going she here. She to quit. See, you, you know what? For years, he would never be on because he's scared to death to talk. Now you turn them on, we can't shut them off. It's okay. You're going to make a salad. This is my mother's very favorite meal when she was with us. And so he's making her favorite salad, which is called a hard-boiled egg salad. Tell us what's in it. Well, there's lettuce, of course. Okay. Eggs, onion, and tomatoes, and mayonnaise. It's a real easy salad, but it's real good. And Tammy's going to make, she loved scalloped potatoes. Oh. 
I can still remember coming home at lunchtime and she'd have leftovers from the night before and they were so good. So you're making scallop, and these are so easy because you don't make a white sauce or anything. You thicken them with Ritz crackers. Don't laugh, it really works. <laughs> and so she's gonna, she's got her potatoes ready and her milk, her butter and her scallop potatoes. Mm -hmm. That's it. So she's gonna put that together. Okay, everybody start. Okay. And I'm gonna make the meat entree, which mama loves meatloaf. I have um, some breadcrumbs here, seasoned breadcrumbs. I have a little minced onion, a little bit of salt, and some, this is rubbed sage that's gonna go in there. Unusual, but it's gonna be good. We have some milk that will keep it nice and moist. That'll moisten up the breadcrumbs also. And we've got a couple of eggs here because that will hold the meat together. That's the binding agent in this meatloaf. Love meatloaf. We're not gonna make a big meatloaf today. What we're making is individual meatloaves. Number one, they look nice when you serve them. Number two, it's nice because you don't have to worry about the length of time because these will cook up very quickly. Excuse me, could you give me a fork, honey? A fork. Thank you. You just want to make sure that those egg yolks are broken up. And I'm just mixing this. It gets very thick in there. That's the basis. Now, it doesn't have to be totally mixed up really well because now we add our ground meat. And we're just gonna crumble it in on top of what we already have here, because that's gonna mix that very well through the meat. Usually you put the meat in, you add everything, and then you're trying to get it mixed up. This is a little different, and I think this works well. This is about two and a quarter pounds of ground meat. Okay. And do a little maintenance here. We're gonna put our meatloaf in muffin tins because they're going to cook quick. So we have these sprayed with non-stick spray. And as soon as I get them cranking here, we'll put them in there and we're going to make a sauce for on them. How are we doing over there? Tammy, let's see what you're doing there. Let's um, tell us again what you're doing. You're layering the potatoes. I did a layer of potatoes, then I did the crumbled rich cracker, and then I put salt and pepper over top, and then uh, I added milk to cover that layer. And okay. Then I dolloped it with, dotted it with butter. Okay, so, so you're doing another, doing you keep doing your layers. Looks like you might need some more milk there too, huh? Depends on the size of the casserole as to how much milk you'll use. If the deeper the casserole, um, you know, the milk goes up, but she's got quite a, a large casserole of uh, potatoes there, so. You want your, your milk to be a little warm because that helps them to get, doesn't have to be, but it helps them to get cooking quickly. I'll finish off this layer and then I'll heat up some more. Okay. Get some milk, more milk heated that up. That will be good. How many layers of potato do you think you have there? Do you have enough for another layer? I probably have, actually, probably four or five. Oh my. Wow, that's a lot. Maybe need to make the potato layers a little thicker, honey. Okay. Because I think if you don't, um, you might have, you won't have it, um, you'll have too much of the thickening and not enough of the potato. Okay. Okay. Okay, and I'm just still mixing, mixing. How are we doing, Paul? We're doing well. Are we? <laughs> yeah. You did nice well. lettuce. Very nice, honey. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is very. It's very beautiful. She just loves when I talk. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy, life is never dull with Mr. Williams. You can imagine. He keeps us laughing. And after forty, being married to this guy almost forty-three years. Is it, is it 43 years? 43 coming up. Wow. <laughs> We've been married. 43 out of 47 isn't bad. No. We've been married 43 <laughs> years. Now, I'm just going to form these into some meat cakes, and we're going to drop them into our muffin tin. That's all we want to do. We want to fill them up and then pat them on the top. Just pat them rounded on the top. Can you understand how quick these are going to bake? That's what you want to hear, because nothing worse than waiting for two hours for a meatloaf. I don't like that. So, I'm just gonna keep going here. Doing all right? Yes. Great. 
Okay, he's slicing his, his tomatoes. While we're finishing up on this, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we've got more dishes for my special Mother's Day dinner. We'll be back in just a minute. Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home, and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Well, if you just joined us, it's Mother's Day here on At Home, and we're celebrating my mom and all the wonderful moms out there. Paul had a wonderful mom, my mother-in-law, Mill. She was a great, great baker, the best pie baker you ever saw in your life. And she could cook, boy. She was a good cook. She was a homemaker. And Tammy, I don't know Tammy's mom, but I'm sure she was a special lady too. You know what? Mothers are great when they love their children. First of all, they love God and they love their children. And that's what I'm honoring about my mom because that's who, exactly who she was. She loved God with all her heart, never tasted of the world, never was in, not even enticed into the world. Her whole passion was to live for Jesus. And when she was 15 years old and her mother, my grandmother died, she took over the household duties of running a house. And she learned that gift of hospitality, which I believe she passed on down to me, and I get to share it with you. So I feel very privileged to have known my mother. She was a great, great lady, and I miss her every day. Someday we'll see her in heaven again. Can't wait for that, too. Right, Paul? That's correct. Paul used to torment her to death, but you know what? She tolerated him. <laughs> It was, she loved them. <laughs> she was the best mother-in-law. She was. Okay, Tammy, what are you doing down there, lady? I'm going to be making, making an appetizer. bacon and tomato cups. Oh, okay. So what I did so far is I took eight slices of bacon and I fried them up, okay. um, get them to their crisp, and then we crumbled them. And to that, I'm going to add one tomato that we've chopped. Okay, and what else? Half of an onion. Chopped onion, okay. Mm -hmm. Half a chopped onion. Like about a half a cup of that. <clears throat> half a cup of mayonnaise. It's going to hold her all together. I'm and gonna... about three ounces of Swiss cheese. Okay, and... but what's the, where did you get the dough that's in the cups? What's that? That is refrigerated biscuits that we've cut horizontal. And then we... Oh, then we just push put them in, in to okay. fill up the cups. Wonderful. And then we have, we're going to add a teaspoon of dried basil to it to give it a little flavor. And they bake in the oven real short time? 10 to 12 minutes. It's like a, that's like... A bacon and I want to say bacon and eggs, but it is kind of because the mayonnaise has eggs in it. But that's a great little appetizer. Mom wasn't great on appetizers, but she would eat something like that, and uh, so that's why we're making it today. And now she really loved this this um, dessert. And Paul, you've eaten this many times that Mom made it, huh? Uh huh. It would be so good, especially on a Sunday after Sunday dinner. She'd pull out some kind of a cake or some kind of a dessert. This is we just baked the yellow cake. It's totally cool. You know, you cannot be even a little bit warm. Absolutely not. And you, and so we have that there. And what you, you're just going to do what? I'm going to put this whipped cream on this cake all over. Seal it to the edges, right? To the edge. You won't see no cake. I hope. <laughs> go ahead. And then the strawberries go. I'm going to spoon them on top of that. Now, these are just fresh strawberries, and you macerate them. That means you cut them all up, you sugar them, taste them, keep tasting. Are they sweet enough? And then you take your knife and you just go down through them and cut them all different shapes. And that renders all that strawberry juice and that makes them delicious. And then you want these to be chilled when you put them on that Cool Whip. If they're not, that might melt that and you don't want that. Then after you put it all together, three items, you put it together, you're supposed to put in the refrigerator for at least two hours, okay? Because you want the cake to chill, you want that to chill, and these to set up on that. Oh, that's a wonderful cake. Okay, do it. And I'm making the vegetable that Mama liked. She loved stewed tomatoes. Now, that's an old-time vegetable. A lot of people don't even know. Some people call it tomato butter because this is just a can, a couple cans, actually. We made more. A couple cans of stewed tomatoes that you buy, and they already have the onion and the celery in there, so you don't have to add. If you just buy plain tomatoes, you can make it, but you want to put some onions for flavor and some celery in there. And you just bring it to a boil, just like that. And what we're gonna do, we need to add something because these are sweet. So we're gonna add some sugar, okay? And again, it's to your likeness. If you like them real sweet, you add a lot. If you don't, you don't even have to do that, but this is the way mama made them, so this is why I'm making them this way. 
And then you have to have some butter. Mama would put a couple pats of butter. And again, I'm doing this for several cans of tomatoes. This is not just one can. Okay, so we mixing that together. And while that comes up to um, melt, I'm gonna add a little pepper in there. You don't have to worry about the salt so much when you have tomatoes because you know tomatoes are full of salt when they're canned. But then we take, this is what makes it so good. This is what makes them stewed. Stewing it means you're just gonna break up like crumbs of bread. It could be day old, it could be fresh. But I'm telling you, my mother would load it up. She would make them sometime and just drop them in there like that. And it would be so good. I was talking to a dear friend of mine on the phone yesterday and I said, do you remember, because she's an older lady, and I said, do you remember tomato butter? Indeed I do. She <laughs> said, our supper used to be tomato butter over mashed potatoes. I'm thinking, doesn't sound bad at all. If you get them <laughs> right, that sounds good. But you can, this is a side dish and mom would make these. Paul doesn't care for them. I like them. I don't make them too often because he doesn't like them. But every once in a while I get a hankering for them. And you just keep breaking up the bread and putting it in there until it gets the consistency, the thickness that you like. How are we doing over there, Tammy? They're coming together. I got them almost full here. All right. What temperature does that have to bake on? Uh, this bakes at 375. Oh, okay. Now you see how that bread's soaking up the juice? Oh my goodness, oh my. I'm telling you, it's still not there yet though, because this has to get thick. So we keep adding more and more bread until we get to where we need to be. There we go. Now, I also want to tell you that, that those little individual meatloaves I made, there's a barbecue sauce that's going to go over them when they, once they have baked. We're going to figure they'll bake 35, 45 minutes, but you want to get to make sure that they're done, they're not pink inside. And then you're going to mix some ketchup. There it is there. Larry's taking a picture of it now. There's ketchup in there. There's some dry mustard. There's Worcestershire sour sauce. And um, uh, let me see. I thought I had my recipe here. Oh, I do. It's right here. Hold on one minute. Let me catch the. There's one more thing I want to be sure you know. Brown sugar. That would, that would sweeten that up too. And what we're going to do, pour that on top of the meatloaf and then put it back in for 10 minutes. That barbecue sauce is gonna really add some flavor and zip. Can make it hot if your family likes hot, put some chilies in it or whatever you heat up your, your uh, foods with. It's really good, you're gonna like it. Well, I'll tell you, we're busy here. How are we doing, Paul? Look how we're good pretty good. Looks. Honey, you're not sculpting, just dump it on there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Took eight minutes to put that <laughs> cool whip on. We may never eat that, that cake, or maybe on the next program. No, he'll get it done, I'm sure. I tell you, this is great. My, my mother, she cared about us. Every morning when I would go to school, the thing is I walked out of the door on the back porch to go to the school. My mother would have her Bible on the table. The kettle would be on the stove, and it would be just at that point where it's going to boil. And she used instant coffee back in the day. And she'd have her cup there. The toaster would be ready because when I left, she would get her toast and her coffee and she'd spend her time with the Lord. Makes all the difference in the world. Did she have challenges in her life? Yeah. But you know, she was a lady that she would not be deterred. She, she worked with my dad in the church and I'm telling you, she sheltered him because my dad worked a full-time job and she sheltered him from a lot of the stuff and she was a real helpmate to him. She was a, it's a real tribute to her. I just can't say enough good things about her. I'm very blessed to have had her as a mom. When we come back, we're gonna be in the dining room. We'll show you everything we made today in honor of my mom. We'll be back in just a minute. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right. No subscriptions, they're available online at no cost, and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. Well, we're at the table here with our Mother's Day meal, and uh, let's take a little tour. These are the baked meatloaves. Remember I baked them in the muffin tin? 
We took them out after they baked for so long and they were finished and we just put them in here and then we made that sauce and we put that on, put them back in in 10 minutes. Look how nice that is to serve. Perfect. And then we have our ritzy potatoes, scalloped potatoes. Oh my goodness. That is a bowl full of goodness right there. You're going to love it. Stewed tomatoes or tomato butter as we call it. That on top of that, that meatloaf would be awesome. I'm telling you, Laurie said, oh, why don't we put that on top of the meatloaf? I said, sounds good to me. We're going to try that one. And then we also have the uh, hard boiled egg salad that Paul made for us. Beautiful. We keep that nice and crisp and cold. You want to season it right before you eat it. So, you know, you can mix it and stick it in the fridge and then bring it out. And we have um, a wonderful strawberry ice box cake. And that's this baby with fresh strawberries and Cool Whip. Oh, my goodness. Mama's favorite. And, of course, as an appetizer, we did the bacon and tomato cups. Those are so good. Your family's going to like them. That's just a nice little bite. Not a real big appetizer. Just nice and small. You know, I've talked a lot about Mom today because she was a, a, a real force in my life. She was an example, number one, of someone that loved God. And all her life, she never changed her idea. She loved him till the very end of her life. The day she died, the scriptures that she had learned as a child were pouring out of her as God was preparing her to go on to be with him. Never forget it. What a wonderful lady. Revere your mom. Doesn't matter if she's perfect or not. Revere her. God will bless you. And be sure to join us the next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. We'll see you then. Food provided by Jordan Banana Company, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Travosburg, Pennsylvania. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.